there's kind of a pushback in Silicon Valley a little bit against hard work. <laughs> Can you speak to the sort of, the thing you admire to see the new guy working so hard, that thing, what is the value of that thing in a company? See, this is I, like, just to be very frank, it drives me nuts. Like I saw this really funny video on TikTok was it on TikTok? It was like, I'm taking a break from my mental health to work on my career. I thought that was funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh, it is kind of phrased that way, the opposite often, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so a couple things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have worked so hard to do the things that I did. Like Mike and I lost years off of our lives, staying up late, figuring things out, the stress that comes with the job. I have a lot more gray hair now than I did back then. It requires an enormous amount of work and most people aren't successful, right? But even the ones that do don't skate by. Um, I am okay if people choose not to work hard because I don't actually think there's anything in this world that says you have to work hard. Um, but I do think that great things require a lot of hard work. So there's no way you can expect to change the world without working really hard. And by the way, even changing the world, you know, the folks that I respect the most have nudged the world in like a slight direction, mm -hmm. slight, very, very slight. Like even if Elon accomplishes all the things he wants to accomplish, we will have, have, have nudged the world in a slight direction, but it requires enormous amount. Of, there was an interview with him where he was just like, he was interviewed, I think, at the Tesla factory, and he was like, work is really hard. This is actually unhealthy. And I can't recall the exact, but he was like visibly shaken about how hard he had been working. Mm -hmm. And he was like, this is bad. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think to have great outcomes, you actually do need to work at like three standard deviations above the mean. But there's nothing saying that people have to go for that. See, the thing is, but what I would argue, this is my personal opinion, is nobody has to do anything, first of all. And second, exactly. They certainly don't have to work hard. Exactly. But- I think hard work in a company should be admired. I, I do too. And you should too. not feel like, you shouldn't feel good about yourself for not working hard. <laughs> like, so, so for example, I don't have to work out. I don't have to run. I hate running, <laughs> but like, I certainly don't feel good if I don't run because I know for my health, like there, there's certain values, I guess is what I'm trying to get right. at. The, the certain values that you have in life, it feels like there's certain values that companies should have and hard work is one of the things um, I, th I think that should be admired. I, I often ask this kind of silly question uh, just, just to get a sense of people when they, like if I'm hiring and so on, I just ask if they uh, think it's better to work hard or work smart. It was helpful for me to get a sense of people from that. Because you think like the, the right- is both. What's that? The answer is both. The answer is both. I usually try not to give them that, but I, sometimes I'll say both if that's an option. But a lot of people kind of, a surprising number will say work smart. And there are usually people who don't know how to work smart. And uh, they're, they're literally just lazy. It, not, not just, there's two, there's two effects behind that. It's one is laziness and the other is ego. Hmm. When you're younger and you say it's better to work smart, it means you think you know what it means to work smart at this early stage. Hmm. To me, people that say work hard or, or both, they have the humility to understand like, I'm going to have to work my ass off because I'm too dumb to know how to work smart. <laughs> and people who are self-critical in this way, hmm. in some small amount, you have to have some confidence, but and you have, if you have humility, that means you're going to actually eventually figure out what it means to work smart. And then to actually be successful, you should do both. So I have a very particular take on this, which is that um, no one's forcing you to do anything. All choices have consequences. So if you major in, I don't know, theoretical literature. I, I don't even know if that's a major. I'm just making something up. As opposed to regular literature. Uh, like if, but <laughs> Applied like- Applied literature. <laughs> yeah, think about like like theoretical yeah. Spanish lit from the 14th century. Like right. just make, make up your esoteric thing. And then the number of people I went to Stanford with who get out in the world and they're like, wait, what? I can't find a job? Like no one wants a theoretical, like there are plenty of counterexamples of people who have majored in esoteric things and gone on to be very successful. So I just want to be clear, it's not about the major, but- Every choice you make 
whether it's to have kids. Like, I love my children. It's so awesome to have two kids. And it is so hard to work really hard and also have kids. It's really hard. And there's a reason why certain very successful people like don't have, or not successful, but people who run very, very large companies or startups have chosen not to have kids for a while or chosen not to like prioritize them. Everything's a choice. And like, I choose to prioritize my children because like I want to do that, right? So everything's a choice. Now, once you've made that choice, I think it's important that the contract is clear, which is to say, let's imagine you were joining a new startup. It's important that that startup communicate that like the expectation is like, we're all working really, really hard right now. You don't have to join the startup, <laughs> but like, if you do just know, like you're, it's almost as if you join, I don't know, pick your, uh, pick your, pick your like sports team. Like, let's go back to the Yankees for a second. You want to join the Yankees, but you don't really want to work that hard. You don't really want to do batting practice or pitching practice or whatever for your position. Right. Um, that to me is wacko. And that's actually the world that it feels like we live in in tech sometimes where people both want to work for the Yankees because it pays a lot, but like don't actually want to work that hard. That I don't fully understand because if you sign up for some of these things, just sign up for it. But it's okay if you don't want to sign up for it. There's so many wonderful careers in this world that don't require 80 hours a week. But when I read about companies going to like four-day work weeks and stuff, I'm just like, I chuckle because I can't get enough done with a seven day week. I don't know how, and people will say, oh, you're just not working smart. And it's like, no, I, I work pretty smart. I think in general, like I, I wouldn't have gotten to this point if I hadn't like some amount of working smart and there is balance though. So I used to be like a pretty big cyclist. I don't do it much anymore just because of kids and like prioritizing other things. Right. But one of the most important things to learn as a cyclist is to take a rest day. But to me and to cyclists, like resting is a function of optimizing for the long run. It's not like a thing that you do for its own merits. It's actually like if you don't rest, your muscles don't recover. And then you're just not as like you're not training as efficiently. You should probably the, the successful people I've known in terms of athletes, they hate rest days but they know they have to do it for the long term. They, Absolutely. They, they think their opposition is getting stronger and stronger. And that's the, the feeling, but you know it's the right thing. And usually you need a coach to help you. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, I use this thing called training peaks. And that's interesting because it actually mathematically shows like where you are on the curve and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. But you have to re like you have to have that rest. But it, yeah. it's a function of going harder for longer. Again, it's this reinforcement learning like, planning the aggregate in the long, but a lot of people will hide behind laziness by saying that they're, they're trying to optimize for the long run and they're not, they're just not working very hard. But again, you don't have to sign up for it. It's totally cool. Like I don't think less of people for like not working super hard. It's just like, don't sign up for things that require working super hard. And some of that requires for the leadership to have the guts, the boldness to communicate effectively at the very beginning. I mean, sometimes I think most of the problems arise from the fact that the leadership is kind of hesitant to, to communicate this, the socially um, difficult truth of what it takes to be at this company. And so they kind of say, hey, come come with us. There's, we have snacks, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but- Unlimited vacation and- Yeah. You know, uh, Ray at Bridgewater is always fascinating because, you know, people, it's been called like a cult on the outside or cult-ish. Yeah. And, but what's fascinating is like, they just don't give on their principles. They're like, listen, this is what it's like to work here. We record every meeting. We're like brutally honest. And that's not going to feel right to everyone. And if it doesn't feel right to you, totally cool. Just go work somewhere else. But if you work here, you are signing up for this. And that's that's been fascinating to me because it's honesty up front. It's a system in which you operate. Um, and if it's not for you, like no one's forcing you to work there, right? 